I have a question for you. Have you ever made a purchase that you weren't expecting to make simply because you were convinced by an unexpected salesperson, showed you what they had, uh, and you decided that was the thing I need? This is Dave here. I'll talk to you about something here. Uh, a few years ago, we were in a department store and we heard over the intercom a big announcement. If you come to this certain department, they're giving away free kitchen knives. And everybody likes a free kitchen knife. So I went over there and in order to get your free kitchen knife, you had to stand there and listen to a sales pitch. That sales pitch, they showed you how to slice. They sliced a tomato, they sliced a potato, whatever. They had a whole bunch of things that show how easy it is and how quick it is. Then they pulled out these big fancy knives here that's got teeth that you're supposed to be able to cut a tree down, a little fork on the end to serve up your ham. And they're great quality knives, and I was convinced. And by the time they're done, they got a whole bundle of knives worth about $85. And so you can get these today for $19.95 and all that. And it was a great little sales pitch, and they were pretty convincing. Something interesting, though, about a month later, I was at another department store uh, in another area and heard the same announcement and saw the same sales pitch with a different sales guy. And he used the same story that the other guy used about the lady that I talked to the other day. And she said, well, what if my knife, if I buy one of those, what if I don't get those same results you do or something to that effect? And I told her, well, if you can't cut with this knife, you don't even need the kitchen. Something like that. Okay, so both sales guys, a month apart, different locations, selling the same product. I had to be ornery and I asked the second one, I said, hey, did you talk to the same lady that the other guy talked to that I heard about a month ago with the same sales pitch? I had to do that, I'm just that way. He looked at me kind of blankly and realizing he had never talked to any lady like that. He said, well, that's just part of our sales pitch. I wanna to talk to you about something. Proof, how can you prove something to be true? And are all proofs equal? In the book of Acts, chapter 1, Jesus appeared to his disciples after the resurrection. Acts chapter 1, verse 3, we see it here in several versions. I'm going to read the King James first. To whom he has showed himself alive after his passion, or after his death and resurrection, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God by many infallible proofs. Infallible means there's no possible way that it could be wrong. That's infallible. Now, take a look at this. In the English Standard Version, he presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs. Just proofs. Uh, English, or let's see, American Standard Version, many proofs. Uh, CSB, I think that's Christian Standard Version, convincing proofs. Holman Christian Standard, convincing proofs. Um, Message Bible. He showed and presented himself alive to them in many different settings. Uh, New American Standard, convincing proofs. Uh, New Century Version, proved in many ways that he was alive. Uh, convincing proofs, proved in many ways. None of these believe that the proof that Jesus gave for his own resurrection were infallible. Would God leave something that important to just convincing proofs? That sounds like the knife sales guy that needs to make up a story to convince he's got a good product. He's got a great product. He didn't need to make up a story. I was at the state fair last summer and I bought this nice little super duper hose nozzle. I don't know what the brand is on it, but it's supposed to be one of the best things since sliced bread. This thing's supposed to shoot 20 or 30 feet. It's got all kinds of settings. It's got the uh, straight through uh, channel, so there's no elbow, so you got more pressure supposedly. And because of the convincing proofs of a very skilled sales guy, I forked out the $35 and came home with this amazing little hose nozzle. And when I screwed it onto the end of my garden hose, uh, it leaked around the threads. So it's convincing proofs. I bought it. That wasn't a problem to fix it. I kind of pulled the rubber seal out, reseated it, screwed it together again, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. It was worth the $35. But it was not because of anything infallible. It was because I saw that it looked like a good product, and I thought I'd give it a try, and I bought it. 
because of his convincing proofs. Convincing proofs are what uh, cause terrible legislation to pass in our government because somebody had enough convincing proof to convince their bills to vote their way. Convincing proofs are what happens in a court of law and sometimes they're fallible and sometimes they make mistakes. Infallible proof is what God has reserved for the scripture when it describes what Jesus did in regards to his resurrection. So let me ask you a question. Which of these uh, translations of the wording is God's word and which of these are man's word? Now this is a pretty common sense. A third grader could answer this. Do you think God would leave something as important as his resurrection and the Bible says that in order to be saved, you have to believe in the resurrection of Christ. There's no salvation without understanding the resurrection. So this is a salvation issue. So question is, which of these is the word of God? The many proofs, the convincing proofs of all these other versions of the Bible? Or is this the word of God as he intended it for us? He showed himself alive after his passion by infallible proof. You decide.